Welcome to Level Up Your Metahumans, Optimize, Retarget, and Accessorize. In this video, we are going to go over how to update, download, auto, retarget, and add animations, add accessories, and swap different skins in the sequencer. So let's jump in and get started. Open the Metahuman Creator website. Make sure the version is set to Unreal 5.5, then launch Metahuman Creator. Now, any metahumans you create will be version 5.5. It's important that you modify a metahuman. Even a slight modification will put the metahuman into the My Metahumans category, which is necessary in order to be able to export them optimized. I'll show how I did this with the Row metahuman. Double click or click Create Selected. Then I just modified the eye color. Then you can change the save name. And close your metahuman. Now the metahuman you just created will show up in the My Metahumans area. And if you have legacy metahumans, you can upgrade all or some of them by right clicking or just click upgrade selected to active version. I've got a scene started and in order to bring metahumans in, you need to have some plugins turned on. So I'm going to go up to settings and plugins and bridge. So you can see that bridge is turned on and also metahumans. And you can access the Quixel Bridge plugin in a couple of ways. You can go to Windows and Quixel Bridge. I really like to go here, click Add, and just type Quixel. And then say Add Quixel Content. And the bridge will prompt you. You just need to make sure you log in, which I've already done before. And also then you can see your metahumans. There's the My Metahumans and the entire collection. Now, I want to point out the difference for importing metahuman base character. So like we mentioned, we used row earlier. Here's row. Now, cinematic complete, I brought that in, but once you've modified it and made it your metahuman, then you actually get an option of bringing in the metahuman. If you're using Unreal 5.5, then you actually can import the metahuman in a variety of optimized formats, which is amazing. I downloaded each of these and clicked add and it created separate folders. Now I wanna show you the difference um, and to open up and see the size of what's in that folder. So click on the folder, Alt Shift M. Now you can see this is 1.2 gigabytes for the cinematic version, Alt Shift M and you've got 220 for the high, 179 and 144. Now you can see also a breakdown of what is actually taking up the largest amount of file size. Okay, let's add them all to the scene and quickly compare the different models. Great, now that we've got our row of rows, in looking at the two, the cinematic and the high version look pretty close. So I will definitely be using the optimized version in my work. The other thing worth noting, I'm gonna hit Alt 2 to go to wireframe mode. You can see that the low version has a mesh for the hair as opposed to hair strands. All right, back to lit mode and I'm going to get rid of the cinematic version. And we are ready to row, row, row our boat onto Auto retargeting. Let's delete these two rows. We're going to add her to a sequence and get her walking. So we'll go in and put it into this folder here I've called cinematics. We'll go to cinematics, create a level sequence, and we'll call it my mall walk. And we'll add her. So we'll go to add and actor to the level cinematic. So now she's added in here. We, we really don't need the control rig, so I'm going to delete that. And now I wanna add some motion to her. We'll go down to the animations folder and find some animations under the mannequin. 
And I see we've got here, let's double click on this and take a look. Okay, so that's walking and that's the MF walk forward animation. So I'll right click on that and we'll go to retarget animations. Now this is such a great new workflow that uh, they added in Unreal 5.4 and we'll choose the MetaHuman control rig and we want to make sure that we pick the right MF walk forward animation. Now we could do multiple animations if we wanted to, but I'm just going to do this one. And then I'm going to say export animations and I'm going to put them in a folder that I created ahead of time called animations under my content. And we'll just say export. All right, it completed. And now we will just double check it and yep, it's animating. Now we just need to add that to the character. So we'll go under body, we'll click here under animation. Now we just need to type the name of the file, which was MM walk forward. And there it is. It's a loopable animation. It looks great to loop it. All we have to do is just drag out the timeline and it works. All right, so the next step is we are going to want to accessorize. We want her to get a, a nice hat that she can wear around the mall. Control E to open the blueprint. We can do this in a couple ways. We can add a static mesh to the blueprint. So just go in here, add static mesh, a hat, and then choose the hat mesh that we want to add to her. We, we can adjust the way it sits on her head now that that hat's part of the blueprint, we could dynamically turn the hat on and off with visibility. So I'm just typing visible. We can uncheck that for now. So now it's invisible. And what else? Well, we can also show how we can add it as a, a temporary attachment inside the sequencer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going into the the skeletal mesh and we can turn on the visibility of the skeletal mesh it's show flag bones one and now i can right click and add a socket and i'm going to call that socket hat and now that we've got this we can move it up and we can adjust it to match exactly where the hat will sit on the head save and um, we can close this out we probably want to sh uh, shut turn this uh, show flag to zero we don't want to see the skeleton all right so now that we've got that in the system let's go and choose the hat we'll drop that into the scene now we want to zero out the transforms of these hats so um, in just a second we'll just type um, zero 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 for the hat, I like the red hat. So zero, zero, zero. And we will now go into the sequencer and we're gonna add that hat to the sequencer. We have it selected. Now it's it's in there. Now we need to just go click here and choose attach. And we'll choose the binding and inside the binding of the body mesh is where we found the socket. And so now it's attached. But why aren't we seeing it on this character? Ah, that's because uh, she, she's got a twin and her twin is down the hall. So let's go back down the hall here. All right. Zip, and let's see. Up oh, there's the hat. Okay, well, we need to do a little rotating on there. And now it's fixed. Awesome. So the final step is to uh, what if we wanted to make this as customizable or modular as possible if we wanted to be able to use the walk cycle use the socket that we already created on this character in the background right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate the sequence i'm just going to show you how flexible the system is it's so amazing we can then just call this version two and we're going to go in and i'm going to select him now in here i'm going to right click and choose replace. And I'm gonna replace with this mesh. Now look down the hall and look, he's in the sequence. He's walking. Now if we move the, there, there's the hat. Now I want the other hat. I don't want him to wear that. I want him to have a baseball cap. So we'll go in, 
We'll choose the other hat. We'll replace that too. And so now we have two sequences with characters walking and wearing different equipment here. Well, or a hat. Good for mall walking. Awesome. All right. Well, that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.